ready whenever you are. Cool. So, I'm Greg Callahan. We're here in Fanata de Gur. Just got the first copy of the World Stage Book, and I'm going to take you for a bit of a walk through it. So, yeah, to start off, cover is really cool. It's uh, Sam Hill. I think this was the last stage of Ainsley. And uh, yeah, it was a real cool stage, good crowd, loads of good, cool dusty corners at the ends. You can see he's just roosted that boy and he's pushing to the finish. Um, yeah, wasn't Sam's best race, but uh, yeah, he did enough to win the overall again. So yeah, let's get on through. So here we have the contents is the calendar. So yeah, a bit of a kind of map without it being a map, which is quite mysterious. Interesting. Uh, adverts. Not going to go through them too much. Do, do, do. Lovely Shimano XT Orlo. Just saying, lovely group set. Yeah, round one. Low Barnakea in Chile. Yeah, this was a yeah wild race up in yeah proper high Andes mountains. Was a really really cool location. Um, yeah, somewhere you'd kind of never expect to really ride a bike. So yeah, it was a really really cool place to race, and um, the racing was really good too. So yeah, first few pictures are just kind of setting the scene. You can see the real nice landscape, real nice sunset that we got like every night, which was insane. Like yeah, those sunsets were mad. Uh, oh, that's cool. Is that, I think that's Keegan Wright. That was actually on the way to one of the stages. There was this real cool like gravelly kind of war ride bank thing and he's just roosting it, which is, uh, yeah, sick. Yeah, pretty much what all the stages looked like. It was just like barren, rocky, raw land, like no trees, bushes, anything. And then just a line of trail and tape. It was proper raw. Like before we raced the stages, they were barely even tracks, but then they just cut in so well because it was just like sandy dirt. That, yeah, they just got rutted up like kind of like a motocross track. It was really, really cool. I think this was just the top of stage one actually, which doesn't look like it here, but it was actually kind of on a ridge. So the outside of that left hander was actually quite a steep drop. So it was quite, quite intimidating. Looks like nothing here. Wow, that's cool. Win Masters doing what he does best, showing a bit of leg. Fair play to him. And roosting above that as well. Uh, and yeah, I think that must be the last stage on both days, finished down into the town. With these fresh turns that were built, but it never rained for them to pack in, so they were just so loose. And the crowd just lined them, so you couldn't even see the next corner because the crowd was so tight in on the trail. It was uh, yeah, wild for sure going down that one. Especially after like stage six, I think was something like 14 minutes or something. So you were totally hanging and then you crested the hill into the finish and had to, had to let her on for the crowd. Yeah, that was a cool stage, cool race. Picture of the chairlift and then yeah, from the chairlift you could see a few of the stages like probably like the top five minutes you could see when you're on the chairlift. It was real cool because you could see like a rider and then a trail of dust and the next rider and you could see who was catching who and what was going on. It was pretty cool actually to watch, it's like watching the live feed. There's a rat boy doing a steezy little tweak. Is it rat boy? Yeah, it is rat boy. Part-time endurist. And there's a, yeah, my teammate, Zach, Zacharias Johansson Blom. That was a, yeah, that was a real good race for him. He got sixth. Yeah, sixth, which is his best ever. And uh, yeah, cool photo of him there, roosting the corner. And uh, yeah, smashing it. That was, uh, yeah, it was stoked for him. He got sixth and my other teammate, Gusty, we all ever got fourth. Which was, uh, yeah, so cool to see those boys. They both deserved to get those results. So it was, uh, yeah, really, really cool. I did not get those results. I had a bad weekend. There's Eddie with his uh, getting the foot out drift on. And you can see as well, just below that corner where all the tape's gone. Because these corners were so loose. So like so many people were just blowing off track and blowing through the tape. Like by the time we raced, there was just so many knots have been retied in the tape because it was so hard to stay on track. But uh, yeah, that's cool. And then Isabel as well. I think she had a good one there. I think she went second. So uh, yeah, every race. second. Was it every race? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I knew Cecile won every race, but I didn't know Isabel was second every race. That's uh, yeah. Cecile last year was just insane. As insane as this. Anita Gehrig, absolutely flattening herself. She uh, yeah, that was a big crash. When I heard she crashed there, I knew it was going to be massive. And then saw the photos, and it was even more gnarly than I thought. That was like straight out of the start of one of the stages. <clears throat> yeah, it was like you just pinned it along this like ridge and there was no, nothing really around you. So you had no real gauge of how fast you're going. And then you dropped through two rocks and just into this steep chute into a corner. 
as I said, you've no gauge of your speed, so she obviously misjudged it and came in hot. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out too well. Not so good. There's uh, Sam Hill getting the uh, getting the tats out. Bit of a dad bod there. And then Cecile as well. And is that Robin? Yeah, Robin Waller, he had a good one there as well. I think he got third. Yeah, on the podium. He had a really good season actually. When, uh, yeah, he missed a few races having a little bambino. Congratulations. But uh, yeah, he was flying last season. Cool to see. I have everyone hanging out, having the beers after. Sam with a classic foot out roosting. Just, yeah, proper Sam Hill photo, as you'd expect. Ah, cool. We have a time check. All the stages. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, so I was 55 minutes racing for Sam, and he was 36 seconds ahead of Martin Mays. And then a minute 25 back to Robin Walner. That was one, yeah, Sam just that weekend. He pulled everyone's pants down. Fair play to him. And Cecile, she won by 47 seconds, which, yeah. Pretty big margins, but it was such a gnarly long race that if you were just chipping away, getting good stage results in every stage, you'd quickly build up that kind of margin. Look at all the stage stats there as well. Stage two, 1,793 meters of descent and 11 kilometers. That was a gnarly stage. I had no hands left by the end of that. That was insane. Enduro is not an endurance sport. Words by Chris Kilmurray, my coach. Oh, I'd say that's interesting. And a photo of Rupert Chapman having a beer. Mr. Enduro himself. Probably shouldn't have had that beer, actually, because he broke his leg at that race. <laughs> that was an Austrian pet. Son. Yeah, trail beers, bad idea. You break your leg. Don't do it. Round two, Manizales. This race was nuts. First photo is uh, Marcelo Gutierrez on the urban stage, which was nuts. The crowds on that track were just insane. And it was taped real tight, so the crowds were coming over the tape. So you couldn't really see where you were going. You just had to kind of remember it from your practice run. And uh, yeah, Marcelo's a king in that town. Like he got, the crowds around him were just insane. Whoa, that's cool. Is that Killian Brown? Yeah, yeah, Killian Brown. Big old wall right in the crowds. As you can see, like, the track's coming all the way down there, but you can't even see the track because it's just people. That was sick. That's, that's a cool photo. Yeah, it's pretty cool when they can do prologues like that and bring the, bring the race to the people in the town. Really cool. And then the next day was a very different story. Rained all night and then stopped raining for the race and was pretty hot, so the dirt, dirt got so sticky. And there's a few boys washing their bikes in the river, which you had to do to keep your bikes moving. And then classic Colombian liaison as well across this real skinny little bridge over the river. Um, yeah, that was a that was a cool race. Crowds were good, tracks were good, everything was good. There's a photo actually one of the someone's fork totally clogged up in mud. Marcelo there being swamped by all the TV and everything after the prologue. That was pretty much him for the whole weekend, just being a celebrity, local hero. There's a seal sending it. That's cool. On the way to yet another win. Well, there's the Irish flag. Keelan Grant getting sideways. That could be a moment to be proud of for him. Sam Hill not getting sideways. Keelan Grant getting sideways. There you go. Tables have turned. That's cool. Yeah, that was another down that section was just real steep shoot into like off camber slick corner. So yeah, the crowd was there, so he wanted to send it on, but risks were high. Yeah, another win for Sam. Another big one, actually. That was... Yeah, I remember actually racing that first stage. And I overtook Curtis Keane. And I thought, like, oh, I've, I've done a pretty good one there. And then I think Sam put, like, 20 seconds into me. It was ridiculous. He was just, again, on another level. Yeah, he won that one by 47 seconds. It was only 18 minutes of racing, and he won by 47 seconds. And then Damien was another a minute 11 back. That was... Yeah. Masterclass. It was interesting as well because the first Chile was totally dry and dusty, and then Colombia was total mud bath. So like total opposite conditions. This was real short stages. Chile was long stages, but same guy on top. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it's not the first time he's impressed, though, is it? <laughs> Probably won't be the last either. No feet for mere mortals. And a photo of Olarg, someone, Marco Osborne getting Randy, crashing. That was a wild race. That was so. Uh, yeah, just so slick and steep. It was, um, 
Yeah, gnarly. It was like this kind of clay rock soil. So it was just nothing to really bite your tires into and it just kept kind of raining on and off. So the tracks were just constantly that level of slickness that is, yeah, so hard to ride. It was a tough race. Oh, cheeky one of me there. Made it into the corner. Nice, nice. Holy moly. Cody Kelly, you mad dog. <laughs> Taking a new French, uh, French nose pick to a new level there. Holy crap. Full on nearly just smashing his face in. He gets away with it. That's a classic enduro move when you're like five minutes deep into a stage, you've no arms left, and your front wheel hangs up on something and you're just, not much you can do. You don't have the strength in your left. There's Do Dog Dylan between the big rocks. I think that was uh, stage three on the Saturday, it looks like that's probably practice because that was like mostly walking path and then for the race it rained and it was all that rock and oh, it was so scary, so slippy. Adrian Daly having a bit of lunch. That was, I think it was just after that race he got injured, so that was his last race. And yeah, he got on the podium, I think he was second there. Um, yeah, shame to see him injured, hopefully he's back for New Zealand. Because, uh, yeah, such a good rider to watch, like just so, so smooth and skillful on the bike, it's cool. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully everyone's back healthy this year, you know, you don't want to, uh, you want everyone at the races, don't you? You don't want people missing out because they're injured. There's Teo Galley as well, fixing his derailleur. He was a local rider there. <coughs> And yeah, he was going really well. I think uh, he was at the front and then, yeah, had a mechanical and crashed and broke his thumb as well. That was, uh, or could have been an amazing weekend. It was a tough one for Tail, which was a shame. But still, I'm sure it was cool for him to race in front of his home crowd. And yeah, that's literally his hometown. So that must have been a cool feeling. Well, I've had it myself, so I can say it was a cool feeling. There's Adrian, speak to the devil. Dirty arse, knee and elbow, even though he was still Came second, it was one of those weekends where you could kind of be fast, have crashes and still be at the front because everyone was just having mad crashes and spills and mistakes and everything. Mm. Whoa. Keegan, right? Keegan giving himself a bit of a facial. <laughs> Load of ceiling coming over the front tire. That's uh, mad looking, he must have just hit a rock right there. And another rider, that steep shoot on stage seven, I think it was. Like, if you made it down there without crashing, you're a superman. Like, I think everyone pretty much either crashed or just rode straight into the tree at the bottom and stopped against it. Like, that was so gnarly. And, of course, the crowd were loving it because, yeah, everyone loves a bit of carnage, don't they? So, yeah, there's some wild photos from that section. There we have Richie. Richie Rude, he won that race, which, uh, yeah, was, um, yeah, he was having a bit of an off. Well, a couple of years, and then he just switched it back on for that one, which was cool. Um, managed to get the win, yeah. Cecile, again, another win. She, uh, yeah, mad, like she just, she always says she's not training much, so chilled. Like you'll see her in a race run and she's just like popping wheelies and just pulling up off little kickers, just looking like she's out playing and then she's putting in incredible times. So, yeah, fun is fast, and fast is fun. She's proof, living proof of it. Yeah, it was a much closer race actually. That was, yeah, 50 minutes total race time. And Richie beat Adrian by five seconds. So it was, yeah, close. But then Cecile, on the other hand, holy moly. 59 minutes for Cecile and she was two minutes 46 ahead of Isabel. That's, yeah, just shows you when it, when it gets tough, so, someone like Cecile just excels so much. Stats, 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 loads and loads of stats. Enduro Pomodoro, a picture of spaghetti. Surprise, surprise, written by Enrico Guala. <laughs> Mr. Italy himself, Pope of Enduro. Enduro to be good needs high quality ingredients and a perfect recipe. Much like pasta. Yeah, that's, I'd say that's an interesting article actually. He's, uh, he's been involved in Enduro since the very start and yeah, I'm sure he has some pretty interesting uh, insights into what he feels is a, makes a good Enduro. This camera can only 20 minutes at a time. Is that 20 minutes? That's like 17. Is it? <laughs> Holy Not shit. It? <laughs> Holy fuck. I thought I was going too fast. Yeah. Is that? Oh, this will speed me up. <laughs> Round four, Pets and Jamnica, Austria, Slovenia. That was a mad one actually. Yeah, we raced in two countries. So it was yeah, right on the border between Austria and Slovenia. So we were crossing the border during our liaisons. 
which was pretty cool. We actually had a liaison under a tunnel through a mining shaft. That was mad. You, yeah, you just they strapped two torches onto your helmet and your bike, and off you went into the middle of a mountain. That was cool. Cool race. It was a big mix. Each day was two, three stages, and the first two were pretty. First two on the Saturday anyway were pretty physical, and then the first two on the Sunday were just sick tracks, good flowy, and then you had each day finished with a big long stage under the gondola down into the pits. That was, uh, yeah, really cool, like fresh cut, gnarly, rough. Like, in my mind, the perfect enduro stage, I think. Like 13 minutes of just hardship and deadliness it was cool. And there's, oof, that loose dog. Getting all jackknifed into the corner. That's a cool photo. Good bit of body English going on there, swinging off it. There's Jesse, mad dog Jesse. That looks like the end of stage one, I think it was, with this real tricky root section that you had to like, it was just roots all the way, but you had to like hop high to get over the roots. You had to push into roots to hop across roots and land on roots and then turn the other way. And yeah, it was carnage. And there, as you can see my dad standing there with his phone in his hand on the stopwatch. So he does uh, split time and so he'll be telling, telling everyone who was up and who was down and all that. He's our lifetime in other races, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Rory Cunningham, he had a real good one that weekend, actually. He was, yeah, he was flying, I think he was fourth. Which uh, was cool, yeah, he's new to Enduro, I think, yeah, it was his first full season. So, um, yeah, he obviously figured it out well that weekend. It was a good weekend for the downhills, actually, because Eddie, Eddie Masters was flying, he was on a mission. I think he was actually leading it at one point. And then, uh, yeah, he raced the last stage. He's mad. He raced the last stage with a fully bent rotor, so he'd no front brake. But then apparently he rides like 80% on the rear brake anyway, so it didn't even matter. Which like, it was such a steep track. Like I was on the front brake the whole way down it. And somehow he managed to not be bothered by not having a front brake. Mad. Yeah, uh, Robin Walner, he had another good one. He had another podium that weekend. And then Elliot Heap, he was flying that weekend actually, the young fly. Uh Yeah, he was under 21 world champion this year, but he was at the front in the overall that weekend. I think he was something like sixth or so. Uh, no, 13th. 13th of the men's, but he was pushing on top five. And then I think, I don't know, his hands got sore or something. Oh, who's that guy? Oh. Nice, that's cool. That was Boris's photo. Dropping into that root section I just spoke of a minute ago, that's dropping into that. So I'm bracing myself for some real, real jank. Real enduro jank. There's Casey Brown getting steezy. And then jump, as she does. And to seal again, on her way to another win. That was, yeah, Martin there, looking pinned. That was a proper hard battle between Sam and Martin. It was real cool to see, like, came down to the last stage between the two of them, and they both gave it absolutely everything. Sam came out on top. But, uh, yeah, it was cool to see that kind of racing. And then Vid Persak, local hero, he was flying. So it was there, third on stage three. And he ended up fifth, yeah, which was cool. Fully, yeah, privateer, local kid. As well, like a lot of the stages were fresh cut, so yeah, he probably didn't didn't ride a lot of it actually before the race, which was cool. He just knew that, you know, just yeah, just a good rider, fair play. Always good to see privateers going well. There's Sam the man. Yeah, he won that one as well. There he is with his ankle. He actually hurt his ankle on the Saturday in the last stage. <clears throat> which I think he kept kind of quiet, but uh, yeah, so he had a bit of a sore ankle for Sunday, but still soldiered on through and smoked us all yet again. Time check. Yeah, another one, 52 minutes of racing, 10 seconds back to Martin. But I think before the last stage, it was actually less than that. It was like two or three seconds, and then Sam just put on a big one for the last stage. But yeah, another a minute back to Robin, so those boys, those two were really pushing themselves forward and forward through the whole weekend. And yeah, another win for Cecile. She was an hour racing, two and a half minutes up on Isabel. Casey Brown on the podium. She was three minutes back. So yeah, it's mad how like it's always, it always feels like such close racing, but in the end, sometimes the gap ends, the gaps end up spreading out as people have mechanicals or crashes or whatever. Trophies and rainbows. Trophy of Nations teams pick themselves with the top three go through system. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. First Trophy of Nations this year, so. Yeah, I did a enduro the nations, yeah, years ago when before EWS, and uh, yeah, it was really cool, cool vibe racing as a as a team. 
And this year the winning team are going to get the world champ stripes. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think France will probably be hard to beat. Like there's, You could probably have two French teams and they'd probably be one and two. But up the Irish. We'll give it a good go. Now the twill. There's Ratboy, he was back at that one. Shouting loose dog. And there's the top of one of the stages, that was real cool. But the helicopter, right behind where we're all standing there, is just a sheer cliff, like a couple of hundred metres down. And then the stage started on kind of a ridge line and yeah, proper epic, big alpine scenery kind of stuff. Really cool. Yeah, there's the start of that stage. That's actually kind of a ridge along there, so that's a pretty steep drop down in the stage went. All the way down to the bottom of the valley. That was cool, that's Blanky dropping in there. There's Isabel, again, another second place for her. Good weekend. Eddie the Eagle Masters. Yeah, he went well again here, actually. He just, he just had a great season, didn't he? I think he was, he was on the podium, I think it was third. And two day, three third places, ended up on the podium. Yeah, fair play. And a classic Martin Mays photo on the pipe. Front wheel up in the air, just looking pinned. That's cool, that's proper. You can tell he's charging there, can't you? That's cool. And the Kiwis, the Vanzacks, of course, keeping the crowd going, getting the points in. Good lads. Innes Tama, up and down season for Innes. She, uh, yeah, she broke her back at Whistler. We managed to come back for finale, which was pretty cool. It was a pretty quick recovery. And yeah, fair play, Innes. There's Sam. That's on the end of one of the stages on Saturday. It rained for that one, actually. I think it got cancelled for the women and then we were all sitting at the top waiting for the <coughs> course to be reopened because there was a crash in the women's. Um, yeah, and the track was just so greasy. It was like fresh cut track that got pretty blown out in practice. And then it was pretty wet for the race and greasy. And by the time we raced it, like all the catch berms out were gone. And it was so steep and rooty. That was gnarly one to race. I remember at the end there was this real slippy rock slab in a corner and everyone was shouting, go left, go left. But even if you went like fully left, you still just slid out. I crashed there as well. I think so many people did. But uh, yeah, that was Sam. Sam on his way to another win. Jeez, he really did. When you look at it like this, he really did smoke us, didn't he? <laughs> Mark May second again. Another battle for those two. That was, uh, yeah, two of them were really uh, going at it when Martin was, was at the races. He was, yeah, he was injured for Madeira, not Madeira. Columbia, Manizales. Yeah, uh, yeah, he dislocated his shoulder in uh, in practice, which, yeah, it was a shame, real shame. Never good to see. Whistler. Whistler in a photo of Jesse, just poking his hand in. Oh, it's not Jesse. It's um, one of the other Rocky Mountain base. Yeah, there's Remy Govan. Yeah, home race for Jesse and Remy, so it's always a cool one. It's always. Jesse, like, just, he's on the limit at the best of times. And Whistler especially, he just finds another level. And, uh, yeah, I was really hoping he could hold it together because he won in 2017, so I was hoping he could hold it together and back it up. But, yeah, practicing, I think it was stage one. I was probably 30, 40 seconds in and just saw Jesse walking down with his bike holding his hand and was like, oh, man, you're joking. So, yeah, he had a bit of a pretty big crash. He said it was just, a, just one of those things, you know, just caught up on a route or something and bang. So yeah, he broke his hand before he missed the race, which was a shame. But uh, yeah, another gnarly whistle. It was real dry and dusty, so the tracks were real blown out. Um, yeah, it was hard. It's like a car look at fuck. <laughs> there's a chef on our way out for a walk. Uh, yeah, there's Sam. I think that was the end of stage two, real off camera, rocky section into a catch. That was kind of blown out as well by the race, so it was kind of, yeah, a tricky one. Tricky, tricky section. There's Jared Grubby. Yeah, really mixed mixed year for Jared, especially mixed few weeks here, actually. Whistler was his best result. Uh, I think he had seventh, and uh, yeah, then went home after that and got diagnosed with brain cancer, which was gnarly that, yeah, his best result was with a tumour on his brain. That's absolutely mad, so. Yeah, he seems to be recovering as, as well as he as well as can be expected. You know, he's he's back on the bike in between his chemo. And uh yeah, all the best. Grubby, we we know cancer won't won't beat that man. He's uh he's as tough as they come, so give it a hell of a kicking. Eddie the Eagle again, he was on another good one that weekend actually. 
He, yeah, top five. Yeah, he had a podium actually, didn't he? He's a madman. Like he, he plays the the leisure, the leisure card, like as if he just hangs out. But he's as fit as a fiddle. The boy flies. There's the seal again, looking happy because she won yet again. And then Noah Cram looking stoked because yeah, she had a really good race. She had a podium there, which was cool because 2017 she was a privateer and then got picked up by GT. So it's uh, yeah, really cool to see she, you know made use of the pro contract and turned it into a podium, which was, uh, yeah, sure, more to come, I'm sure. She's pretty pretty new to Enduro in general, actually. And Martin, Martin the Musk Maze. That was, uh, yeah, him and Sam were going at it all year. And Sam kept coming out on top, and this one, Martin went like a madman on the last top of the world stage, the big one. And uh, yeah, he got the win. I remember Keelan Grant had actually crashed, and he was, sta he was on the track watching everyone come down, and there was this, a real long physical section in the middle of the stage and he said everyone came on put in a bit of a sprint and then sat down and like just sat in a rhythm and he said Martin came through that section stood up and sprinted it as if he was sprinting to the finish line and that was probably like seven minutes into a 20 minute stage so he was just yeah he definitely wanted that day he deserved it and yeah it was cool because it's been yeah I think he had like eight second places or something in between his last win and he yeah so just Really, really cool to see Martin, Martin get the win again. Time check. Yeah, he had a big win actually. So it was a 41 minute race, 41 second win over Sam. And then Eddie was 46 back in third. So uh, yeah, that's cool. There's the seal, she was 47 minutes and 125 back to Isabel. So another, another convincing win for Cecile really. I think she, yep, she won every stage. Which, uh, yeah, in, insane, crazy. There we go, the famous photo, rumor mill article. Yeah, that's uh, Jared, Richie, myself, Martin Mays, waiting for a drug test in Olerg. Um Yeah, so I guess everyone knows Richie and Jared came back with positive results from that. So, yeah, don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully we have some news pretty soon. You know, Rotorua is coming, coming up pretty fast. So hopefully we'll have a, a decision on what's going to happen before then. But. Wait and see, I guess. Round seven, Inza, Spain. Whoa. There you go, Cody Kelly with a Euro table. Euro table, that is class. That's proper like, that was just a flat drop off stairs. So how the hell he's even managed to fold himself into that position is just madness. That is cool. Wish I had that kind of steed, I definitely don't. Well, wow, that's cool. That was another, we seemed to race a lot of ridges last year, actually. That was another ridgeline stage. Pretty sure, I think it was stage six. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty physical stage, but then you dropped into this cool ridgeline and raced along the top of that, which was uh, sick. Yeah, Ains in general was kind of a physical race, but it was such a big variation between all the different stages. Like some of them would be that kind of ridge with this real like moon dust kind of rock, rocky sandy stuff. And then some of it would be out Fresh cut trail, dusty. Um, yeah, it was pretty. Uh, it was a really cool race. The crowd was so good for that. We did a prologue during on the Saturday evening, like through the town. We raced through an actual bar. It didn't count for towards the overall of the race. It was more like an exhibition. But um, yeah, it was cool. The crowd were just absolutely loving it. It was class. There's Jose Borges and Kevin McHale. Kevin, McHale, they both went really well there actually. Yeah, Kevin had a sixth. No, oh, Kevin was fourth and Jose was sixth. That was really cool, yeah. Kevin, yeah, I raced Kevin at a European Enduro in France during the season last year. And man, he was so fast. I was putting together as good stages as I could and he just kept kept beating me. So uh, yeah, it was cool to see him get get the result that he deserves because he definitely has the speed. And then it's, oosh, Andrian Lantern Lado. Lane herself. Yes, yeah, so it looks like she's, that was a gap. That was the end of one of the stages. Was stage one was a real long physical stage. And then there was like a few compressions into the finish. So I guess she, she must not have had many arms left and did the old press up onto the stem. Whoops. There's Isabel again on her way to second place. Dami Naton. There, it looks like he's just caught up to Florian Nicolay actually. 
That's pretty cool. That's the cool thing about those long stages. Like you can, even like you can have a good result, but the guy behind you could catch you or vice versa. Because yeah, over 13, 14 minutes, you know, 30 second gap isn't actually that much. So it's quite interesting to see if you can catch the guy ahead of you. It's always something you want to try to do. And good when you do. You know, you've done a good one if you catch someone. There was a uh, famous photo, that one in real well, on, uh, on the old social media. Sam and Martin. Sam had a puncture and Martin was there to help him. Which, um, yeah, it was cool. You know, it's something that really, everyone made a massive deal about that. Like, it was really cool, obviously. But it's something that happens so much out in the stages. Like, everyone really looks after each other, which is cool. Like, there's never, you know, I've never seen someone with a problem and not have guys around them helping them. Like, it's, it's really cool how, you know, everyone kind of respects that it can happen to anyone, these mechanicals. So, it's, uh, it's worth sharing your spares and your, your hands to, uh, to help fix them, which is cool. When Master's doing a wheelie, he's good at them. Cecile, dropping that same section that uh, Andrianne crashed in. She's there sending it on for the win. Absolute madness. And then Richie, Richie coming into the finish. Yeah, he had another good one actually. Yeah, he finished last season real strong. Yeah, he um, won the ends the last time we were there in 2016, and then I guess that uh, brought the good vibes back because he'd kind of since O'Larg he'd been off the boil again a bit. So then yeah, he came into Ains of swinging, and um, yeah, had a had a really good race. So here's the stats. Yeah, he won by yes almost eight seconds over Martin. Another second for Martin. Um, 37 minutes of racing, almost a minute win for Cecile again. She's just. Yeah, she killed it, didn't she? Well, it's, it's Isabeau. She got a stage win on the last stage, which was cool. To do another pause. No way. Yep. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Hidden taken. <laughs> so, last round, finale of the year. It's always so cool to finish here. Like, pits on the beach, tracks are always good, locals love it. It's, uh, yeah, one of my favourite races and favourite venues, that's why we're here now, training. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Some cool Italian architecture to set the tone. Very nice, very artsy. And, uh, yeah, Martin's hand, that was gnarly. So, stage one was real tight and techy and Martin punched a tree, didn't crash. Punched a tree, still did really well on the stage. And then came to the feed zone with his hand massive and had a bag of ice he got from the ambulance. And he was like, it was pretty clear his hand was probably broken. But he was just like, no, I'm not quitting, I'm not quitting. Did stage two, and he got, I saw him get interviewed before stage two, and he said to the camera guys, make sure you film the top of this stage, because I might have a massive crash, I don't know if I can hold on. Which just shows the mentality of the man, he's just, yeah, he's not scared. Um, and yeah, like he wasn't, he wasn't able to ride fast at all, but like he just wouldn't quit. Like his manager talked to him, we tried to talk to his riders and kind of say like, yeah, you know, maybe it's not worth getting a hundred place for uh, for just the sake of finishing. And he just said, no, nah, no way, I don't quit. And yeah, there he finished in 131st place, but yeah, he finished. He's a tough, tough cookie. What a season for, for Martin with downhill and enduro. Incredible. There is Isabeau on her way to second again. It was pretty cool, actually. Isabeau raced the last stage. I think she rode it quite a lot today, actually, with a French flag tied around her, which... Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, Finale's only down the road from France, so I guess she had a lot of uh, friends and family there watching the race. So, yeah, I'm sure they loved that, which was cool. And there is, is it Kevin? No, Theo Galli. Yeah, he had a 15th there, which solid result. Back from, back from the injury with his thumb. So it was cool for him. And then, uh, yeah, Florian Nikolai, he had a good one as well. He's, he's a rider that can always threaten for the podium. Like, he's just... So skillful on a bike, like got such a like light touch. He just looks like he's such finesse. And uh, yeah, he put it together there, and he had third, so he got himself a podium, which was uh, yeah, cool to see, really cool. Wow, that's sick. There's the top of stage, Rocky Bianca, it's called. Um, yeah, proper rocky stage. That is a terrifying section. Um, yeah, we all sat up there for like an hour and a half or something in practice because Alex Kangas crashed and smashed both his hands. Pretty gnarly crash. Um, so we were waiting for him to get extracted and we all just sat there thinking about how scary that section was and then squidded our way down. But uh, yeah, that was Richie actually 
So Richie won every stage that day, but he got a puncture early on in the race and was borrowing CO2s off of the riders and just topping it up. And he'd like just top it up, squish it, and be like, yeah, probably fine. And by the time he got to the bottom of the stage, it was like nearly flat, but he was still winning all the stages. It was mad. So chill, like if I had a slow puncture like that, I'd be stressing. But he was just cracking on and winning stages. There's There's all the boys having the beers in the Santa Cruz pits. That, uh, yeah, pretty much first thing you do when you finish finale is get handed a beer. It's such a long season, you're so exhausted from the end of it. And yeah, especially this, this year was back-to-back uh, -back with Ainsa. So those two races back-to-back -back are so, so energy draining. So you're absolutely wrecked. Someone hands you a beer, you probably haven't eaten in a while. So uh, yeah, it doesn't take long for you to start having fun. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, always a good after party in finale. There's Cecile, classic, she just doesn't care. There she is laughing away, and there she is climbing back out of the bush. Again, on her way to the win, like, probably sent it faster than she needed to down that section and just jumped into a bush. But yeah, still had time to spare. And there's Sam. Yeah, he uh, yeah he played smart that weekend. He didn't really need to do too much to, to secure the win, so he did enough and, yeah, brought it home. Pretty cool section. Pretty cool photo in that section, showing the crowd. Like again, crowd was so tight on the track that yeah, the noise was so cool when you dropped in there. Such a gnarly section, and the crowd gets you so amped. You're just yeah, it's cool. Really cool feeling. There's the podiums. So yeah, Kevin McHell, he had a podium there, which is yeah really cool. Again, backed up Ainsa the week before, put in a solid ride and got third, which was sick. And then yeah, Sam obviously wrapped up the overall, but he had all his family there, which was really cool because. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, he hadn't had, had them to an enduro yet, so it was pretty cool for them to see him lift the trophy, which was, uh, yeah, cool. Ciao. 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 Time check, Richie won by 22 seconds over Damien, 18 minutes of racing. And Cecile actually had a really close one in the women's. She was only six seconds ahead of Isabel. So, uh, yeah, that French flag obviously motivated Isabel, which was cool. There's me, stage one, third. Finally put a good one together, that was good. And crashed on stage three, jumped into a bush. Oops. There we go. Elephant in the room. So that's talking about the Richie and Jared doping thing. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. So yeah, in the end, Sam won by, yeah, quite a bit. Over Damien Otto in second, Flying Nikolai in the overall this is. Yeah, cool. Cecile, perfect score, 3,200 points. Amazing. So there we are, world stage book. There you go, 15 pound or 20 euro, worldstagebook.com. Get yours and have a look. It's class, worth a read. I only read the photos, but the words are probably good too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Awesome. How long did that end up being? <laughs>